my question for you, Rupert, is this, is you also assert that space-time is an illusion, but not coming at it from the scientific angle. How do you do that? Yes, I, I like Don, think that space-time is an illusion. And just um, to be clear about this, because this is something that is often misunderstood, by saying that something is an illusion, it doesn't imply that it is not real. An illusion is something that is real, but that is not what it appears to be. So the, the, the Caribbean beach that we dream of at night is not a real Caribbean beach made out of sand and, and, and sea and air, but it is real as the activity of our own mind. So I agree that space-time is an illusion, which doesn't mean that it's not real. It's an illusory appearance of something that lies behind it that cannot be captured by our perceiving faculties. So, in fact, one of my questions that I'd like to come back to in a minute for you, Don, is that this jewel behind space-time, with what region of the mind can we investigate it, given that the, the normal tools of the mind, thought and perception, impose their own limitations on reality and make it appear as space-time? So, uh, so I... I I'd like to ask you about that, Dom, and let me just finish by responding to your question, Simon. Yes, I've come at it uh, from a completely different uh, angle from, from Don, more, um, more experiential and introspective. And really, I, I reasoned, if I were to reason the process, although for me the, the process came before the, the reasoning and the explanation, in the... It, in the in the waking state, we have uh, thoughts and images and uh, sensations and perceptions. And that constitutes our waking state experience, thoughts and images on the inside, sensations of the body and perceptions of the world on the outside. Then as we fall asleep, uh, sensations and perceptions leave us. We no longer experience the world or the body. We enter what we consider to be a dream state, con just consists of thoughts and images, and then thoughts and images leave us, and all that remains is consciousness. So the consciousness was present in both the two previous states, but it was colored by thoughts, images, sensations, and perceptions in the waking state, and just thoughts and images in the, in the dream state. But as the activity, as uh, thinking and perceiving uh, thoughts, uh, images, sensations, and perceptions as they leave, as we fall asleep, uh, the, the the in other words, as the activity of the finite mind ceases, the more deeply we fall asleep. And at some point, there's no activity of the mind. There's just consciousness. And as the activity of the mind ceases, as thinking and perceiving cease, surprise, surprise, our experience of time and space disappear. Could could it be therefore? that our experience of time and space is profoundly and directly linked to the faculties of thinking and perceiving. Well, yes, of course, thinking takes place in a single dimension. What do we call that? Time. Perceiving, seeing, hearing, touching, but particularly seeing, takes place in three dimensions. What do we call that? Space. Could, could it be that what we call time and space are how the reality that lies behind the appearance of time and space, appear to our thinking and perceiving faculties. In other words, it is thought and perception that um, project time and space or render reality as time and space. Time and, it, it, time and space is the, is the, it's the orange-tinted snow. There's something real there. I'm not saying it's, it's non-existent or unreal. It is real. But its reality is nothing like time and space. When you, um, to use an, an, an analogy, when we look at a, a, a movie, we, three, we see a three-dimensional landscape. When we go up to it and touch it, we find its reality, relatively speaking, is a two-dimensional screen. So something that is, in reality, relatively speaking, two dimension, has two dimensions, appears as three dimensions. Well, Time and space appear to us in four dimensions, one dimension of time, three of space. But behind that, 
could that be a, a, a four dimensional appearance of something which behind it has less dimensions? And I would say if you go all the way back through the beautiful jewel that um, Don talked about, through through whatever the structure is behind that, I can't remember what you call it. If you go back through all the data structures to the ultimate reality, I, I would suggest consciousness has no dimensions at all. And we, we cannot think of that. We cannot even imagine something with no dimensions because everything we conceive or imagine is limited by the, the mind through which we do so. So, I, I, it's a, Simon, to come back to your question, it was really through, 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 through my experience investigating the, the waking state, the dreaming state, and, and deep sleep, and then going back in the other direction. In deep sleep, there is just consciousness. There is no experience of time and space. There is just the awareness of being. When dreaming starts again, the awareness of being doesn't disappear. The dimensionless awareness of being, it doesn't disappear. Thinking and, imagining, thinking and imagining are simply added to it. Thinking and imagining are, as it were, a coloring of the, of the dimensionless awareness of being. And then the waking state, sensing and perceiving are added to it. And we have the full four-dimensional appearance of, of the world. But it's all made of this dimensionless consciousness which is is the the ultimate reality that lies behind and appears as time and space in the waking state. <laughs>